What's up my friends, how you doing? My name is PJ and welcome to another episode of, I'm not sure what it's called yet, I'm going through a rebrand, let's just call it the Legends Club Photo Podcast. It's been a little while since I've posted something podcast wise, I've started to record a couple more because I'm actually going through a bit of a rebrand at the moment, I'm going through a little bit of a rethink of what I want to do with the podcast and just with my audio content going forward because since stopping, a lot of people have said, what's happened to the podcast, where has it gone, and um, I actually do miss it, I really enjoy doing the interviews and I learn a lot myself, and hopefully if you're watching or listening to this, uh, whether it's on my YouTube channel or on iTunes or your podcast service of choice, hopefully you listen because you get something out of it as well, that's kind of the point, I, I am kind of obsessed with finding people better than me at a certain thing, and I, I want to work out how they got to where they are. I want to work out how I can become better by learning from their journey. And I hope you guys feel the same way. Uh, but anyway, in this episode, we have a friend of mine. His name is Max Wilkinson. He goes by the name of Mulholland Online. He is a very talented musician and now a sensational, uh, I guess you would call it like a portrait photographer, fashion photographer, editorial kind of stuff and in the scheme of things he's not been doing it for too long just two or three years I think from memory um, and so yeah it was really good to catch up with Max in this session and just uh, learn a little bit from his process and his journey you can probably tell but it's very early in the morning right now from my tired face it's about seven o'clock in the morning but such is the hustle I've been making sure to get up early to get in these edits and make this content for you guys before work. If you like it, please leave me a comment or just give me some feedback or um, the best thing you can possibly do is leave me a five-star review on iTunes. That really helps me to get up in the rankings or, or whatever podcast service you use. Yeah, otherwise, um, enjoy. Here is my session with Max Wilkinson. Max, how are you doing today, man? What's been happening? Good, PJ. How you doing, bro? Yeah, really good. Did you have a, a shoot yesterday? I did actually. I had two yesterday, which were uh, were pretty good. It was kind of it was rainy, um, and we were outdoors, which sucked. But we moved it indoors, so it was awesome. With a female or male model? A uh, female model. Yeah, both, both were. Yeah, yeah. Which I is wanna, good. Yeah, busy. I want to ask you a little bit about that throughout this um, little session because. I am really interested in learning to shoot females better because what I do requires yeah. I shoot a lot of um, men, a lot of band dudes, and I find yeah, that yeah. very easy. But yeah. um, in my experience, there's a whole other set of challenges shooting girls. So uh, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions around that. Okay, sure, sure. Um, so, like, first of all, how did you start taking pictures? Because when I last saw you in person, I don't even think you, apart from the odd selfie, I don't think you were like really <laughs> much into photography at that point which is probably yeah, totally. two or three years ago yeah not too much i don't think um how did i get into it i think um because uh how did i get into it? i think it was because uh because obviously i do a lot of music stuff and i was traveling over in um in new york um making music and uh I mean, you're in New York, you should probably take a photo or two. Um, so I think I took over, um, uh, my dad, my dad was a photographer, so I took over one of his um, uh, DSLRs and uh, I just started shooting a bunch of landscape stuff, which I really liked. Um, and I got into it pretty heavily just doing landscape stuff, a lot of that. Um, and then I used to work a retail job with, um, do you know Jack Steele? It rings um, a bell. Yeah, yeah, he's a great uh, like fashion portrait photographer, and um, we used to work together. And he was like, "Hey, like I've been seeing a lot of your photography. You should um you should consider getting into this kind of stuff." He's like, "Cause there's a lot of work going on. Like, there's more than I can take on." And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'll give it a crack." And I was kind of getting bored of taking um pictures of things that don't move. Um, so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll give it a crack." So I think that's how I got into um this world of photography um, through Jack. Actually, yeah, I owe it to him. Yeah, right. Because you've just jogged my memory. I remember early days, you were taking some really cool um, nighttime cityscapes and mm. like that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, it was all uh, nighttime, gritty, uh, channeling Blade Runner photos. You know? I totally <laughs> forgot about that that era of Max. Um, yeah, yeah, do you yeah, still yeah. have any of that stuff online or have you gotten rid of um, all of that? 
I don't think I think I cleaned it all out, man. Classic me fashion. Hey, just got rid of it all. <laughs> yeah. I've got it on hard drives, but uh, no, I don't think there's much around anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny how like so many people do that now. Like, um, I understand because I've done it in the past as well. Then you you clean out stuff that doesn't you know represent your brand anymore. But totally. at the same time, sometimes it is really nice to go back. And see, totally. like the progression nice in your feet. Like, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I when especially when I look back on other people, and I know they've got stuff that they've done like a few years ago, and it's gone, and you're like, ah, oh, such a shame. Because it's sometimes it's nice to see uh, like the growth yeah. in someone's artistical, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, but no, I fucking deleted it all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and does your dad still shoot? Um, no, he used to do. Uh, he used to do a lot of shooting when I was really young. Maybe. Um, until I was probably ooh, eight or something, but he doesn't shoot anymore, which is a shame because I know he loved it. Um, but I mean, he's doing other things now. But yeah, he was doing a lot of um, he did all kinds of photography actually. But he was mainly into um, it was like location stuff for when they had like films on or music oh, videos cool. or something. He would be the guy in the background taking all those like behind the scenes shots and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I don't really I don't get too much out of my dad, but uh, but I think <laughs> fantastic. Um, and was he into the digital thing as well, or was he like old uh, no, school? No, this was all um, all before digital times. So he was, um, yeah, I think, and I think that's why I started getting into film from channeling what he used to do. Because I look at all these old photos, and they're incredible. He did a lot of portrait stuff, and I think I think that's probably what got me into shooting a lot of film, which I do now. Um, it was probably through him because yeah, he had all these old big film cameras lying around, so I thought I'd give him a crack. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, not to go too far down like the gear path, yeah, but totally, um, totally. I'm super interested in like um, what what were you shooting in the early days and what are you shooting now? Yeah, sure. Uh, when I first started um, and I was shooting just like the cityscape stuff, I think I was shooting on like uh, it was some real old and average. It was like a Canon. Uh, it was like one of those Rebels or like the, what are they? 1200s or so. I don't know. It's like very basic. Yeah. Uh, and I was just shooting with a, I don't know. I think it was like a 20 to 70 uh, old cheap lens. Um, yeah. And then I think when I started getting into the portrait stuff, I shot, I upgraded, I got a 60 um, and I got a 85 Sigma uh, lens, which I then realized was far too close for what I wanted. So I traded, yeah, I traded in for a 50 mil Sigma, uh, which is what I shoot all my uh, digital stuff on now. Um, And then film stuff, I shoot on this uh, Nikon F3, which is just with a uh, 50 mil Nikon Nikon lens. Mm -hmm. Um, And the I've also got like a little point and shoot, which I don't know where it is right now, but uh, that's around. Is it, have you got the uh, 50 mil art or is it the older Sigma? Um, I think it's the old one. It's the EX, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, oh, not cool. the art. Uh, I haven't tried the art. I'd really like to. One of my friends got the new one and it looks pretty sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, the art yeah. lenses are just like, they've just got some sort of magic in there. But oh, really? I, I know that before the art lenses, um, a lot of people did like that old Sigma Sigma one just for the some sort of characteristic about it. There was it was like way more popular than the Canon from memory. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, um, so you were doing your cityscapes and probably your selfies as well. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, for Can't anyone that, that for anyone that that's not aware, <laughs> Max is also a um, very talented musician, and I think that's uh-huh. how we kind of cross paths through um, Mickey and through some um, mutual musician friends. Mm. Um, and how did you, so like, tell me about your first foray into shooting people, like into shooting models. Like how did you, how did you learn to do that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think I, um, uh, because I wanted to start shooting fashion-y kind of stuff and portrait-y stuff. And I was like, oh, I need a folio if I'm going to do any of this. Cause I can't really go to people with landscape shots. So I, um, I think I just asked a bunch of friends and I really owe it to a lot of those friends for putting their hand up and, or me just begging them and be like, can I please take your photo? Um, cause I need some fucking pictures. Um, but yeah, I think I started, who did I take my photo? Oh, my friend Emily. Um, so I just got a bunch of girls and guys together that, uh, some attractive friends I had and, um, I just asked if I could shoot them. So I think I did maybe, uh, oh, maybe, 10 to 15 shoots of just like friends and stuff who kind of have dabbled in like modeling or something like that, but they weren't like professional models or anything Yeah. Um, just to get like a, a little 
book together that I could present to agencies and like uh, people for jobs and stuff. Um, so yeah, I was probably horrendous when I first started. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it was good. And yeah, everyone was, uh, that's, I really actually owe it to my friends cause a lot of them were just kind of like, uh, as soon as I started taking the photo, it wasn't like they were, um, uh, what's the right word for this? I don't know. They were just, they were all really like, they were comfortable with me and they were like, uh, they kind of gave me everything they could, which is really helpful, especially when you're starting up. So it's good to have good mates like yeah. that, that are happy to help out, you know? Um, that's a really good learning environment when someone is already comfortable with you and you don't have to from the, you're not behind the eight ball from the start where you have to, first of all, make them feel comfortable and then totally. uh, make them feel confident in your abilities and, and yeah, then yeah, yeah, beyond sure. that, actually make good photos. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah. really cool and I really like that you said you did 10-15 to begin with. Yeah, I think so. That's, yeah, um, that. that's pretty good advice because 10 to 15 different shoots is probably going to give you a lot of variety, variety to put a book together, to put a portfolio together. Totally. Um, and I don't think I even used... Uh, everything from all those shoots I think was more just like a learning curve you know um, and then I just picked the favorites from all those um, Fantastic. Yeah, 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 really cool. yeah I think regardless of the style that's something um, something is to be said for that because I know a lot of people uh, that I see that have just sort of started to shoot something or they've just made a website hmm. they've got maybe two or three shoots under their belt and they're just trying to pat it out with and you can see it's just like a yeah, lot of repetition the on the website. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, 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 definitely. So that's really cool. And that's something that I even need to learn from. Um, I'm going to try and from now on do, when even when I'm not booking jobs, I'm going to try and, um, you know, book. I, I really want to improve my natural light portraits um, a lot similar to like what you do, which is kind of why we're talking today. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. And I want to try and book something every week. Um, first of all, just to practice, but secondly, mm -hmm. to make content for the YouTube channel as well. Totally, totally. So, um, I actually love to hear that you did that and I'm going to probably try and do the same now. Yeah, do it. Man, do it. You take great photos. Like you, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you don't give yourself enough credit, Paige. <laughs> uh, well, I sort of, I'm, I'm very comfortable in my little niche of band promos, but yeah, then totally. I need to put myself into uncomfortable situations to learn more about other stuff as well. So, totally, um, totally. That's well, I could learn a thing or two from you, man. I'm terrible at taking bad photos. So, uh, we can do oh, a trade well, you really need to. You, you do a good job at shooting pretty girls. <laughs> um, so, where you, obviously, we've established you shoot models now and mostly mm -hmm. female models. Yeah, mostly, I'd say, yeah. Where do those jobs come from? Are they from an agency? Um, did you uh -huh. have to do a lot of like, uh, you know, trade for pics or whatever to begin with? Yeah, sure. Um, I think when I first uh, got into it, um, the getting work, I knew the work would eventually come, but I think it was more about making a name or something or be recognized um, as a decent photographer. So I think, yeah, after I'd taken those, um, those first, you know, portraits of mates, I just went and I hit up, um, I hit up a bunch of um, modeling agencies just asking if I could start doing test shoots with a bunch of their guys or girls, any of their developing models. Um, and I think the mistake I made with that is I pretty much emailed every agency in like one day thinking like, no one will get back to me. And then they like all got back to me being like, we'd love, cause they, of course they want people to shoot yeah, there. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, shit, I've got to like juggle all this stuff, you know? So if you're going to do that, maybe hit up like two or three first, maybe not like all like however many there are in your city. Um, but, uh, yeah. So from there, I think it was just, um, I just started testing with a bunch of their, um, development, um, girls and guys. And then, you know, just be, with that, uh, uh, people see it. So then I just started getting hit by, um, just a bunch of like, uh, like aspiring models and stuff to start shooting their, um, folios. I think that's where it really began. Um, and then some agencies started uh, paying me to shoot, uh, their like folio, stuff and then after that builds up i mean you get a name and stuff and then i would have brands contact me asking to shoot some of their you know, campaigns or lookbooks or something like that and then uh, a lot of the work i get as well is still through um the right fit um which i don't know if you're on but it's incredible it's uh taryn uh, williams has started up who she uh, she started wink models but it's pretty much it's like a um not to like <laughs> give you an advertisement or anything, but it's like a um, it's like a website um it's an australian run website and um it's just like you go online and you're you can be like oh, i'm a model or i'm an influencer or i'm a photographer and it just lists all the jobs in your city and you can apply there for it so it's good that's always like a really helpful thing i think but um yeah i think i owe a lot to um 
to Instagram as most people do these days. Um, just that, um, yeah, I think once you get your stuff out there, the more work you're doing, the more people see what you're doing and then people hit you up if you've got good work. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have a great answer, but I think it just kind of happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you kind of touched on the fact that uh, at least at the start, you were shooting like some of the up-and-comers or maybe like the new kids on the block to the agency. Totally, um, totally. Has that kind of like trying to relate that to something that I do, which is like local bands, mm. has that kind of um, paid off at all now? Because I'm assuming some of those models have probably come up in the last couple of years and maybe have you worked with them again or has that yeah, you know, totally. paid off in that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, a lot of the uh, the girls and guys that I was shooting who were developing have um, come up and done some great things. Um, like, uh, there's a few that I know who are now shooting stuff for, like, Louis Vuitton and Gucci and stuff. Wow. Like, they're doing campaigns in Europe, and so it's crazy. Um, and it's great. And then I've shot with a bunch of them again, um, which is cool as well. And it's nice. It's, like, it's a smaller world than you think, you know what I mean? Where it's, like, I mean, there's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff, but it's nice when you see the same face and you're shooting with them again. They're already comfortable with you, you know? Um, but yeah, it's great. And I think the best part about, you know, shooting those development models and I still do, I still do it cause it's great to do, you know, um, just to keep yourself in check and work with people who aren't necessarily ready, um, in front of a camera. It's good to challenge yourself, I think. Um, but it's good because you learn so much from those models as you would with shooting friends, you know, but it's good to not shoot the best of the best all the time, you know, sure, um, not sure. that they're not great, but it's good to, um, it, it kind of challenges you and puts you in the position of, you know, you got to make this work. It's not all on them, you know? Yeah. Well, that was kind of another thing I wanted to ask because you, so the timeline sort of that we've got so far, you did 10, 15 shoots with your mates and mm -hmm. you started shooting the, you know, smaller models on the bill. And um, obviously you've worked your way up a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, mm. what's, what's the difference in, uh, your direction between those shoots? Like obviously with friends, you kind of mm. have to carry the workload. You kind of have to, um, do every little adjustment and pose them properly and whatever. And I'm assuming as you go up, it becomes easier. Um, not only do your skills become better, but I'm assuming that, uh, you know, the models just kind of can fall into place a little bit easier. Totally, yeah. How, definitely. how do you get to that next step where you can work with those models who, you know, make it easier? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it just comes with shooting for um, shooting for brands or stuff, or when you book in jobs with people who are, you know, uh, doing I don't know campaigns and things. They'll always be booking the uh, the best models because they want the models with the most, you know. Instagram followers or something. Not that that means you're the best model, but um, sure, sure. But they'll always be booking bigger models. Um, so I think you just kind of end up working with them um, through work and stuff. And then uh, if you're, you know, and again, if you're testing with um, a modeling agency enough um, and you've done a lot of developing girls, then they'll start giving you international girls that come through that need updated folios or something like that. Or yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think it just it kind of happens. But it's great and it's all it's unreal to see and it's good for yourself because you feel uh you feel like you're progressing as well because you're starting to shoot people and you're like oh my god like they know exactly what they're doing and like i don't have to do anything you know yeah, <laughs> right, right. But, um, but yeah it's cool so it actually it's really awesome because it feels like you're um really progressing when you start shooting the uh the girls and guys who know how to work themselves uh, what do you think uh what do you think are the biggest challenges with the people that don't know how to work um i think it's just finding that um, it's finding that spot or that angle or something. So much of what I do with um, with guys and girls, um, more so with guys, I think, because um, girls are generally more photogenic. I guess I don't know if that's right. Anyway, um, but it's all angles. It's all about angles. I would say. So I think it's always finding the right angle on someone, you know. Um, and I think it comes with as well. Usually before I start shooting. Um, with someone I meet, someone we'll usually chat for like 15, 20 or something. Or like I used to do a thing where I'd purposely set up my shoots, um, maybe like 15 minutes walk away from where I want to shoot just so we can walk and start talking. And you just ah, like, you kind of analyze, not like, no, I'm like, you know, uh, yeah, it sounds terrible. But anyway, like you kind of analyze someone when you're walking and you kind of see uh, like their sweet spots and stuff like, and what, and you're like, Oh, that's like, that's how I should shoot. You know what I mean? So you're kind of learning as you start and it's good because you're like building up something they become more comfortable with you. So by the time you're shooting, you kind of like 
know what would work and like they're already kind of comfortable with you because they've chatted with you for a bit. So I would say that's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, uh, I totally get that. <laughs> that's actually a good one. Um, and that's, I think that's a, um, just generally a important part of the process if you're shooting uh, girls as a male photographer because there's totally. obviously, um, you know, not everyone does the right thing all the time. And mm. f- from like the, you know, the textbook, like model mayhem uh, yeah, stereotype, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes totally, the, yeah, yeah. the male photographers can get a bad rap. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Also, I just find, and I haven't shot, like I said, I haven't shot too many girls. I haven't shot, I don't think I've ever shot a, you know, model. Mm. Um, but I just find that girls have different insecurities to guys. Totally. Like, definitely. Um, you know, girls will say things like about their arms. They're like, oh, my arm looks fat. Whereas a guy will be like, um, can you can you Photoshop my beard or like something yeah, weird yeah, like totally, that? Yeah, you make yeah. my abs sharper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. Totally. That's something that I find really weird. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that's very true, actually. Yeah, and I think it just comes through. I mean, the more comfortable they are with the shoot, and it's always nice to like if you see something they're doing good, as you would. But it's like if you see something that they're doing good, it's always it makes such a difference, especially with girls, just to compliment them on what they're doing, not in a like creepy way or anything, but just be like, and especially specifics, and be like, ah, like your like your face looks really great there, or like what you did with your eyes there is really good, or like just little things, and you can see the more you do it, not that you should be like dishing out compliments like every five or five seconds, but uh, the more you do it, you can kind of tell that they're kind of getting a bit more comfortable and it's good, it's good, it's good to see. So, yeah. Do you show your models the photos on the back of the camera as you go along? Oh, this is a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I know a lot of guys who don't and I really think that is the way to go. Um, I generally don't unless I know I've got something that I can show them and they'll like it'll help you, you know what I mean? Cause some, there's nothing worse than like showing someone photos that aren't edited or anything just cause they're raw or something. And, um, and they aren't into them cause then it kind of drops the mood of the shoot. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so I generally, as a rule of thumb, I say don't, but sometimes it can really help. And if someone, you can tell that they just kind of need a bit more like a confidence or something. And you know, you've got a good shot to show them be like, ah, oh, and, I would just be like, check this out, you know what I mean? Like, look how good this looks or something, you know, and it's a little things. But that's also the beauty of shooting film. You don't have that. Oh, you- interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that question, which is sick. I love that. Yeah, yeah. and they <laughs> just got to trust the process. Totally, totally. And there's nothing worse than like, because usually, I mean, it takes like a few frames to get in the roll of things and there's nothing worse than when someone asks you after like the first 10 frames, oh, can I see something? And you're like, ah, sh- not really. Yeah. Like, but you, yeah, I don't know. You, I would usually just be like, ah, oh, look, uh, I don't know how I get out of that situation, actually. I think I just say, like, um, uh, oh, they'll look heaps different when they're edited, so maybe, like, I'll show you some later or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess you just got to feel it out for, for how it's yeah. going at the time. Yeah. Um, that's, that's another interesting thing that I've encountered while trying to improve my natural light shooting because when you shoot with strobes and, um, you know, my thing with bands is uh, I kind of rig the game. I set myself up to win by I shoot late afternoon, so yeah. the, the light's uh, low yeah. and then I, you know, underexpose the ambient and then light up the yeah. band with a the flash. Then it looks impressive on the back of the camera. Totally, totally. Whereas natural light, you've kind of got one or the other. You can't balance the exposure like that. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. always look as flashy to show someone on the back of the camera. Totally. So yeah, definitely. I'm, yeah, light is so important. Yeah, I've definitely been trying to work out that balance for myself because with bands, I can be like, I can literally take three shots, you know, at the start of the shoot and just be like, look, this is where we're going. Just like have yes, confidence in sick. me. And they'll be like, yeah, wow, wow, wow. Because with the strokes, totally, it totally. looks impressive. But I'm, I'm sure. finding that a little bit of a, just a, a different beast with natural light. Mm. Definitely. No, that's cool. It's so good. Yeah, your lighting is always so good, man. You always got sh- everything's lit to the shit house. It goes off. I love it. Anyway. Really- <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So, um, who who are your photographic inspirations? Like, who do you look up to? Mm, who do I look up to? I'm sure um, there's a million in it. And it's like asking someone their favorite band and you can't yeah, think of one totally, right on the spot. Totally. Um, that's so tricky. I mean, there's... Um, you know what's funny? I think 
I think as much as I love photographers and like I, someone like, uh, who's someone who's really inspiring me at the moment? Um, I think he's someone who's really inspired me for a while is uh, like Alistair McClellan. Uh, he's great. Um, his portrait work is incredible. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's funny, like you look at a lot of photographers and stuff. Um, and then I end up trying to do the same thing as them, which kind of, it's, it's great because they inspire you, but you also got to have, remember you got to have your own flavor mm. to your images. But I think what inspires me the most is when I'm watching, I watch so many movies, um, and TV, I guess a bit, but mainly movies. And I think it's like movies and like, uh, music videos and stuff that, um, really inspire me the most more so than uh other photographers because okay. you watch something like for example i saw um what did i see oh, i don't know how to pronounce it i'm gonna sound like an idiot but um is it the beguiled or the beguiled or uh it was the one with it was that sophia coppola movie and it's got like kirsten dunst and nicole kidman and Elle fanning and they're all living in that like house and then they think it's like the cold war or something and they like look incredible as they do in every like speak off movie yeah. but i saw that movie and i was like oh man because it's like it's in like nature and they're all wearing their like white dresses and it's very like a uh, picnic at hanging rock um and i saw that movie and i think the next weekend i'd set up like two shoots and i was like we're gonna shoot them like in a park and it's gonna like we'll get white dresses like so i think it's like uh, like film and stuff that inspires me most because you're like, I wish I could capture an image that kind of has the same feel as that movie or something. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> is think. that, um, is that, does that apply, you know, like compositionally as well or is it more just about like the tones and the, you know, the props or the colors or something? I think it's more the tones and the props and the colors because I know my compositions uh, as much as I try to and I think it's important to try and break out of like uh, your natural, the way your images fall. You know what I mean? Like you see people's images and you're like, oh, that's this person's image or that's this one just by the way they positioned and like, angled and everything. Yeah. So I think, um, I think it, that's an important thing to have as a photographer. Like you have your own uh, little flavor or something when someone sees your image and it's like that. But I think throwing the different tones over the top or throwing the different feels over the top is what um, kind of makes the image a bit more interesting because you're always going to fall into that same kind of composition even if you don't want to. Um, yeah. It's by force of habit, you know, um, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good answer. Um, and just on the topic of like tones and um, feel, mm. do, you, do you use Lightroom to edit? Um, yeah, I do. I do. Um, I, yeah, I use Lightroom. I think I originally was using the, um, those VSEO presets, um, yep. that everyone's on and then just like tweaking them from there. Um, yeah, yeah. Lightroom. Yeah. Lightroom's to go, I guess. I hate editing, man. That's the, that's half the reason I got into shooting film as well. Cause I'm like, I have to edit. Oh Shit. man, but you're so good at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so right. you started, um, would you say you learned a lot from using these preset packs? Um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, I look back at some like old photos and stuff and the edits I had on them and I'm like, oh man, I can't believe that. Um, as I'm sure most people would. Um, but uh, yeah, I learned heaps. I learned heaps. And I think that's, I think that's the best part as a photographer these days because you have, it's like half editing, half actual shooting. Literally. Um, that it's like important to like, you know, fuck around with shit, you know what I mean? Um, and just like, mess things up just to see how things work and find your own little spot so it's like don't be afraid to like play with everything you know what i mean um the more you learn about it the more you can use i guess right right i've always been um on record on the podcast i've been a little bit against presets like for the past totally two years yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. just recently i've kind of realized the value and i've kind of realized that um you know i've probably been shooting for let's say like seven years now and for the first mm. three or four, to be honest with the edits, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, mm. like I said, I can I can set myself up to win by using the strobes and then you've got lots of color, color like punch and contrast and you don't have to do too much. Totally, to the edit. Yeah, yeah. But now I've kind of realized that if, if there's something that you can see that you like in a photo, you know, if you can get your hands on a preset in a similar vein, even if it doesn't mm. work in one click, you can look at the, you know, calibration or you can look at the color panel and see where the tones are going. And yeah, you don't totally. even have to use that preset. You can literally do your own tone curve or whatever, but then just mm. apply like the same color grade, you know, to get mm, the same definitely. feel or like see how someone does their grain or whatever. And I've kind of realized just how important that is if you want to learn quickly and not mm. learn solely through trial and error. I've kind of realized yeah. that 
presets are like a real game changer. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good. They're great. But I totally understand what you mean. I have a lot of respect for people who don't use presets because it seems so many people do. Um, but yeah, when people don't and they've just got everything from scratch, I really respect that. I'm like, that's sick. <laughs> you didn't need the crutch, you know? <laughs> yeah, but at, at the same time, it's not like it's not like the year 2000 where you can sit there and just Photoshop every totally, image, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, kind of like with film, you have to have it all at once. Mm. You have to be able to process it all at once. And yeah, I know cool. that, you know, I, I don't know what you do with your developing and whatever, but you... I'm guessing you probably don't have too much um, to do with the actual processing. No, not at all. Yeah, there you go. Just yeah, yeah. Hand, so, yeah. I mean, I kind of, kind of view presets in the same way. You don't have to totally, yeah. do every single image from scratch and whatever. Even if you, you know, you might do one and then copy it across a whole scene or a whole shoot. So, I've totally, definitely changed yeah. changed my mind about that. Um, and I wonder if anyone's going to go through the old ones and, and find the contradictions in my stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. I think it's all learning. You know, it's good. And they, I think the thing I've learned over the time, especially with presets and editing, it's like subtlety is key. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the more you're like smashing the edit, the worse it ends up looking. So, yeah. yeah, that's so true. <laughs> when you first start, you're just like, oh man, this clarity slider is amazing. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. <laughs> and now I'm sure you're pulling it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that's that's just about all I've got for you today, man. I just want to know, like, um, what's what's on the future? Where do you want to take it? What's what's uh, on the horizon? I should say. And yeah, um, I just want to do more of what I'm doing. I'm going to travel. I'm going to America at the end of the year, so I'm going to try and do some shooting over there, which would be cool. Um, but I think, I mean, look, the best thing um, is that you're just meeting new people all the time, as you would with bands and stuff, you know what I mean? It's great. You meet all these new people. And sometimes it's a bit lonely because maybe you'll meet these people one time and you'll never see them again. But uh, it's great because you meet them and then they know people and you end up I think I want to, rather than concentrating on being like, oh, I want to book this campaign, I want to book that, I just want to be like happy with the work I'm putting out. You know what I mean? I want to be making good photos. Um, so if I can look back on my work in five years and it's good, then that's great. You know? <laughs> but, uh, it's a very admirable yeah, way to be. <laughs> I guess. Um, another thing I should say as well, um, it's a good thing to get into and I didn't do as much as I really wanted to. So if you are looking to get into, um, you know, shooting models or doing like fashion stuff, um, I would say contact, especially when you're starting to shoot developing people or it's kind of odling stages, even now, like I still do it. It's great, but it's like, um, contacting like, uh, photography agencies who have a bunch of photographers on their books and just ask to assist for free, um, with a bunch of their, like, cause you get on, you know, you'll get on a shoot and it's for like some big brand or something and you'll watch how these people shoot and you learn so much and you're just assisting. So you're not doing a heap, you know, um, but just from being there and experiencing how it all works, I've learned so much. And you also see as well, like makeup artists will have like people assisting and then you make contacts with them and you're like, why don't we uh, do a shoot together or something? So I'd say that's really something worth getting into as well. That's something I want to touch on real quickly because I forgot to ask earlier. When you do your sort of like uh, test shoots or your folio shoots or whatever for the models, do you mm. have a small crew or do you just do one-on-one? -on -one? Um, sometimes one-on-one. -on -one, I'd like to have a small crew, especially um, – it kind of comes across – especially, look, I think when you're starting up um, with – if you're going to uh, modeling agencies or whoever um, – for the first time, you're like, I want to shoot your developing girls. I think it really comes across as professional. If you can be like, great, I've got this organized and I've got a makeup artist here. If you can get a stylist, great. Um, but, uh, and I think it's great for yourself as well, because usually it falls on the photographer to organize everything. So it's, it's kind of good learning as well to organize all these people and have them all together. Um, but yeah, I try to have a makeup artist most times. All of the time I don't. And sometimes it actually turns out Nah, I don't know if it's right to say better when you don't, but like, um, but sometimes it turns out nice. Like you're, if you're shooting at the beach or you're doing something where it's like a bedroomy style thing, sometimes it's nice to not have any makeup and have a really natural feel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try to get makeup and most time and styling is great. If you can get it, it's a bit harder, but, uh, because a lot of stylists don't want to do stuff for free. Yeah. Um, but it's great if you can. And that's and then when you start shooting for jobs and stuff, usually they'll have the makeup booked for you and all that. You don't have to do anything. But um, 
I think it's really important to, um, as much as one-on-one works and it's really great sometimes, um, it's important to get as many people involved as you can because it's all about connections and working with people and you never know what comes from it, you know? Yeah, fantastic, man. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, oh, great. Thank you. It's been so good to chat about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely got a lot out of my, myself. I got a lot out of it myself and I think a lot of people will as well and I'm going to make sure to um, put some, you know, some of your photos and and work alongside the post and i might even um might even add you in we've got a little whoops we've got a little um facebook group going the big pants legends club and um i might i might put you in there and um just totally totally just do a little intro uh that sort of goes along with this video and yeah Yeah, cool uh i'm not on facebook so to be a downer Um, (laughs) i'll just i'll just post up all your yeah please do website and uh, stuff shout at me if you need me to send you like high-res images or anything i can send you a few across yeah fantastic Uh, yeah that sounds sick dude great questions i love it it's so good so well like i said most of them were selfish most of them were ones i actually wanted to know (laughs) so that that part's easy i love it i love it (laughs) but yeah thank you so much man and um Time. I'll talk to you, you very soon. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Thanks, buddy. Catch up.